We are back once again. More Down for Sound amplifiers hitting the market. This time the Down for Sound JP13, 1300 watts RMS. This one fits between the JP8 and the JP23. I know some of you may be asking, why so many Down for Sound amp tests? Well, we're supporting a small business. They have great prices, product selection, excellent quality products, and I believe in the products and use them myself. That is correct. And also, the amp in this video is provided by Down for Sound, but I still provide accurate data plus my genuine opinions. In this video, we're mainly going to focus on the dyno test of the JP13, but we will show some exterior and some other things, also some of the ratings. But again, don't expect this to be a full, detailed Williston Audio Labs video. That's why this one's on the Extras channel. Um, this amp, you know, looks like all the other JP amps on the end. It has pretty much the same features and selections and all that. So we're not going to spend a lot of time going over all that stuff as we usually do. A real interesting thing here is a JP8 and JP13 are literally the same size. JP13 is more powerful. However, it uses the surface mount design technology, which gives you more power in a smaller package, which is a good thing. Now here on the one end, you can see the JP13 does have zero gauge inputs as opposed to four gauge for the JP8. So that right off the bat tells you this amp is more beefy and we will see it is quite a bit more beefy. On the opposite side, it looks virtually identical. Not a whole lot going on there. The Tiffany style RCAs of course and all the other settings. It does come with the bass knob too. The typical really good bass knob that Down for Sound has kind of perfected uh, that has the voltage, temperature and all that. So now we have the amp hooked up to the dyno and let's fire it up and let's try it out and see how much power we get. In this test, we're actually going to show all the different tests from 8 ohms all the way down to half an ohm. So get ready for that. On the left is the RMS power output. In the middle, the ohm load. The right, the voltage of the dyno will also have the remote indicator from the clamp so that we can calculate efficiency. First up, 8 ohms. Most of you may be saying, why are you doing 8 ohms? Well, this is an extra. This is a less edited video, so we're just going to show it. 8 ohms. We get 431 watts right at 14.48 volts. Amp is not rated at 8 ohms, so it's good just to kind of know. If you have box rise, you're using the amp at 4 ohms. This gives you an idea of how much power it'll put out. Uncertified to clipping, it does get over 500, 509, 14.42. Then let's try dynamic. Same the 40 hertz track into the amp. We're closing in on 500. We're not quite there. 489. Oh, 495 at 14.53. As far as efficiency goes, very good at 8 ohms, 94.5%. Let's move on to 4 ohms mono. It's rated 700 watts at 14.4. We're starting the test around 14.4 and letting it drop a little bit. And you can see here, 810 at 14.26. As we've kind of come to expect with Down for Sound Amps, you do get more than you pay for. Let's try uncertified up to the clipping point. Again, rated 700 watts at 4 ohms. We're over 900, 915 at 14.16. Next up, we will try the dynamic test. The clamp cannot keep up with the pulses, so you won't see accurate ratings here on the clamp meter. I don't even know why I keep it on the screen. But um, 925, whoop, 931 at 14.13. Let's check that efficiency with the certified mode, 88%. That's very good at 4 ohms. Next up, 2 ohms, rated 1,000 watts at 14.4. Again, the voltage is going to drop closer to 14, maybe a little bit under. Let's see here, 1,372 watts at 2 ohms at 13.95 volts. Nice. Giving you more than you pay for for the win. Uncertified up to clipping. Can we hit 15? Yes, 1517 watts at 13.67. All right, let's try that dynamic test. Now, two ohms and down, the dynamic test gets more and more impressive each time. It's nice to know that it has that built in dynamic power for those transient peaks. 1626 watts at 13.93. Efficiency's dropped. No, actually it hasn't. Stayed at 88% at 2 ohms. That's very good. All right, 1 ohm. This is where the amp is rated 1,300 watts at 14.4. Here we go. I bet we get that 1,300 easily, and we do. 
2057 at 13.72. So again, we're half a volt or more away from 14.4 and still busting 2000 watts. Uncertified to clipping, yes, 2303 watts at 13.28. So this thing is beef, there's no doubt. Dynamic power. Again, as I mentioned earlier, dynamic power, the lower ohm load we go, the more impressive it gets. 2,686 watts at 13.7. Efficiency at 1 ohm dropped some. We're still at 73%. Anything above 70 at 1 ohm, I think is pretty good. Now let's move to 0.8. This amp is not rated for loads under 1 ohm, but we're going to kind of stress test it here for you guys. Certified test first. 2288 watts at 0.8 certified to 1% distortion uncertified at 0.8 this is a brutal test taking it up to clipping and this would blow any lesser amplifiers but 2549 watts at 13.3 i'd say this amp is a 2000 watt amp all day long dynamically over 3000 watts 3093 at 13.9 and the efficiency, of course, is going to drop the lower ohm load you go. 68% at 0.8. Yes, we're going to go even lower. Are you guys ready? 0.67. We're going to do two tests. We're going to do the certified and the dynamic. First up, certified, 1% distortion. 2282, so we're not going up much in power. And the lower ohm load we go, but dynamically, check this out. Yo! <laughs> Almost 3,400 watts, 13.72, but the efficiency is down in the gutter at 59%. That is to be expected because you're really stressing the amp running it this low. Now, what about half an ohm? Can it do half an ohm dynamic? So I showed the amp here in the test because you'll see it runs a couple pulses and then, oh, goes into protect. Now, if you power cycle the amp, which this is what we love when an amp goes into protect, it tells you, hey, we don't need to run that low. Turn it off, turn it back on. We got blue light. So amp is working, will continue to work. So very good protection circuit built in here. Here's a summary of all the tests we just ran from eight ohms all the way down to a half ohm. You're welcome to pause this if you wanna see it. I'd appreciate if you didn't do a screenshot though and share it on social media. Just send people to my video, please. That would be much appreciated. Now let's take the bottom plexi panel off and let's check out the internals of the JP13. Here we go. You can see the two transformers. You can see the two output inductors, uh, four rail caps. And speaking of rail caps, these are 100 volt, 2200 microfarad, 105 degrees Celsius, 35 volt, 2200 microfarad there for the filtering. And then you can see the thickness of the plexiglass here. Very nice. And again, we'll do a overview here of the amp. It's a typical a half bridge Korean style amp. These are made in China to save a little bit of money, I believe. There you have it. Here are the three, the JP3, the eight and the 13. You can see the size differences. Also note, the only thing I really didn't like about the 13 is the small fan was a lot more noisy than the JP8. You can see on the bottom here when I show it, it's a small fan. But overall, I like the amp. Till next time, Big D, I'm out. If you haven't seen the previous video on my other main channel of the Down for Sound JP3, make sure you check the link here to see that. Now, I did not show all the tests in that video, so I wanted to leave here the result sheet so you could see all the different tests and all the different results. Big D, I'm out.